Today we're going to take a look at my PowerBook 1400C, a really beautiful machine from 1996. Unfortunately, it's a bit slow and it came from Apple with a few major compromises. So today, we're going to see if we can make at least one of them right by installing a CF card as its hard drive using this handy CF to IDE adapter and see if we can't get a little more speed out of this thing. So I kind of have a thing for firsts and lasts when it comes to old computers. For example, my 12 inch aluminum PowerBook G4 was the last PowerBook and the last PowerPC laptop sold by Apple. This computer on the other hand, this is an example of a first and it's kind of a big one. It's the first laptop from Apple and one of the first laptops sold with a built-in CD-ROM drive. Released in November 1996, the 1400 series came with a PowerPC 603E processor in 117, 133, or 166 megahertz variants, with either a C, denoting active matrix display, or CS for passive matrix. So mine here is a 1400C, with this quite nice Active Matrix screen. And this PowerBook replaced the absolute debacle of the PowerBook 5300, which was the first PowerPC PowerBook, and it was absolutely plagued with performance issues, quality issues, and got a lot of negative publicity from the batteries actually catching on fire in some of the early units. So the 1400 series that came out after it was pretty well received. It has a very nice design, really excellent keyboard. The trackpad's actually quite nice. And it even had pretty good performance. Well, except for mine. You see, I kind of bought the wrong one. Well, kind of. So this is the 1400C with the nice active matrix screen, but I got the 117 megahertz version, which is the only 1400 with the distinction of being designated a compromised Mac by low-end Mac. And it's because of really one critical flaw. It's the only one in the series that doesn't have a cache. And this lack of a cache coupled with the lower clock speed, so 117 megahertz, no cache, the next level up, 133 megahertz with a cache, was 30% or more faster than this 117 that I have here. So really crippled by that lack of a cache. Now my dream with this though, is to find one of the Sonnet upgrade cards that actually lets you put this up to a G3 and potentially a 450 megahertz G3 because the processor in here is actually on a daughter board and the daughter board also contains the cache. So as soon as you replace that daughter board and upgrade the processor, that whole limitation goes away and then you actually have a very nice laptop that's plenty fast enough even for OS 9 and it has a great keyboard, great trackpad, great screen. And that was actually, from what I've read, a pretty popular thing to do back in the day was to find a 1400C with the 117 megahertz processor. And the people selling them knew they were slow, so you'd probably find it at a discount. And then your goal was to upgrade it with one of those Sonic cards later on. So kind of a pipe dream to find that Sonic card. In the meantime, though, I'm probably going to order a parts machine one of these and see if I can't get the 133 megahertz processor, which is a direct swap in. And hopefully it'll let me upgrade the RAM too, because the other limitation of this machine is that it's a 64 megabyte memory ceiling. And the RAM modules are unique to this machine. There's two little stacking RAM modules in here uh, that we'll see when we open it up. And... In my machine, fortunately, one of them is populated, so I have a total of 32 megs of RAM. So if I buy another one of these machines, I think I can just stack that RAM module on top of it and hopefully get at least over 40 megs of RAM, which will let me run Classzilla, 
which unfortunately will not run on this machine due to the amount of memory. Okay, well, I think we're ready to dig into this machine, so let's take it apart. One other cool thing about these old power books is how modular they are. So you've got your battery that can be released, of course, but so can the CD-ROM drive. And you can actually swap that out for a floppy drive, and I should probably pick up one of those as well. But fortunately, we don't really have to take all that much apart to get to the hard drive and the memory and stuff. In fact, they made this computer extremely easy to take apart. You just slide this little speaker cover over and it snaps right off. And then we just have to lift up the keyboard. And you actually don't even need to take the keyboard off to get to the hard drive. We could do the hard drive right now, but I also want to take a look at the memory in here. So I'm going to take this off. And we just need to remove the six screws holding the heat sink on. And you can see this one in the middle here is kind of a standoff. So that'll feel a little weird when you're unscrewing it. And now we can disconnect the hard drive ribbon. and we have full unimpeded access. So we can see our uh, one memory module, which is here, and this is the built-in. Let's just take a look at what this memory module looks like. So we've got this little kind of daughter board with some, some memory chips on here and uh, they did make one size bigger. Obviously you can see where there could be four more chips on here. So instead of installing a brand new OS 8.6 on the CF card, I thought instead we'd clone the original hard drive to it. So for that, I have just your all-in-one card adapter from Amazon. And then I also have a USB to IDE adapter. And to put it all together, I will dig out my trusty Power Mac G5. And by dig it out, I mean it's just been right here the whole time. So we're here on my trusty Power Mac G5 dual 2 gigahertz with just uh, 3.5 gigs of RAM, uh, though I do have max RAM on the way as we speak. And unfortunately, that IDE adapter was not compatible with the G5, so I went on my Ubuntu machine to clone the Mac drive into this image here. So let's start up Disk Utility. And this should be straightforward. Source, old Mac drive, destination, our CF card, erase, and restore it. All right, so first we need to scan this image for restore. Oh my God. 
Okay, so since nothing seems to want to work today, let's do it the old-fashioned way. With DD, also known as Disk Destroyer. So DD input file equals old Mac drive output file equals the CF. My goodness gracious. And we'll just let that go for a few minutes. All right, and I think we might have it. Nope. Well, maybe. So let's see if I can resize that partition in disk utility. Uh, it does not seem that I can. File system resize support required. Huh. Do I need to unmount it first. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I've come to find out that the reason I was having so much trouble resizing this image on the CF card is because this is in HFS, not HFS plus, which actually was the standard or the standard file system for 8.6, I think since 8.1. So this install must have been upgraded at some point and kept the HFS file system. All right, let's put this card into the PowerBook. So of course I can't find my double-sided tape anywhere, but I guess it doesn't really matter if this is kind of loose in there. If we have the bracket here, and that can kind of float, you know, it doesn't weigh anything. And then that'll give me easy access to the card, and then whenever I find my double-sided tape, I'll just stick it in there. All right, we are now CF card. All right, we're back together. Let's see if we boot. Okay, and I'd say we booted up several times faster off the CF card than we did from our spinning hard disk, which makes sense. Okay, so now I'll take that CF card back out, which is super convenient. We'll put some of those other files back on there for those PC cards. Let's see if we can get an Ethernet card working. And I've got the driver already extracted. So let's plug this in. So 
So we'll just have to drag this to our extensions. Okay, so it recognizes our card. And let's see if it can connect. All right, I'm not sure that's working. Wow, this is seriously so much faster with this CF card in here. That makes a huge difference. Wow, it's like night and day. All right, we've done it. We have successfully connected to the internet on our 32 megs of RAM PowerBook 1400C. Our CF card is working great. Our PC card, Ethernet card is working great. And I just, I can't get over how much of a speed difference the CF card has made. It really feels 10 times faster. I know it's not that significant of a jump, but I mean, it's awesome. I am really happy with how this turned out. So I think the next step for me is going to be installing a fresh install of 8.6 so I can get HFS Plus and make use of the entire CF card. Uh, but for now, I'm going to browse the internet at the slowest possible speed, uh, and I'm going to call this video here. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.